Hey guys, I'm Joe, this is Theojo Tech. I thought a good topic today would be to talk about the different display adapters and connections they have out there. DVI, Thunderbolt, DisplayPort, that sort of thing. So why don't we go over just the basics of them. I don't want to get into too much detail, but pretty much everything you need to know if you're going to get a monitor and it's got different connections, you'll at least know the basics of what each connector is capable of. Specifically, I'm gonna talk about DVI, DisplayPort, HDMI, and Thunderbolt because those are pretty much the most common right now. First, we can start off with DVI. There are three different types of signals for DVI. There's DVI-A, which is analog only, DVI-D, which is digital only, and DVI-I, which actually carries both. And in the case of DVI-I, which you'll probably usually see, it's actually backwards compatible with VGA, which is analog only because the DVI-I carries both analog and digital signal. So that's why you can usually pretty easily get a DVI to VGA adapter because they both can handle analog. Now DVI can also be dual or single link. Really nowadays you pretty much only see dual link and dual link actually has double the bandwidth of the single link. Single link can handle 1920 by 1200 at 60 hertz and dual link can handle 2560 by 1600 at 60 hertz. It can handle 4K, but only at 30 hertz. Also, DVI can only transmit video, not audio, and it only uses the RGB color model, not YCBCR, which is why it's really only used for computers which use RGB. Next, we can talk about HDMI. I'm sure most of you are familiar with this. It stands for High Definition Multimedia Interface. This is pretty much the standard for many, many devices, and there are actually several different generations with different capabilities the most recent being HDMI 2.0. So that's the one I'm mainly gonna talk about. HDMI 2.0 actually does support 4K at 60 Hertz, and it also supports the Rec 2020 color space, which is a very large color space, which is great for compatibility. And it also supports YCBCR, unlike DVI. HDMI can also support a little bit more in terms of what it can transmit. For example, it can also transmit audio, obviously, but it also can support two video streams simultaneously, at least 2.0 for dual view. And it also supports ethernet over the same interface if both devices support it. HDMI is also compatible with DVI because it supports everything that DVI does. So you can really just use an adapter from DVI to HDMI and not lose any quality as if you were just using direct HDMI. And I should probably mention that just like all digital interfaces, it's pretty much all or nothing as opposed to analog. So no matter if you get the $100 HDMI cable or the $5 HDMI cable, they all work exactly the same. Next, we can talk about DisplayPort. This is usually just used for computer monitors, but it does support a lot of other data transfers such as audio, even USB and internet. The latest version of DisplayPort is 1.3. This supports 32.4 gigabits per second of bandwidth, which is huge. It can also drive a 5K display at 60 hertz and an 8K display at 60 hertz, as long as it uses 4.2.0 compression. You'll see DisplayPort pretty much on most graphics cards nowadays, whether it's the full size DisplayPort or DisplayPort Mini. And it can also actually transmit USB 3.1 which is the newest edition of USB, and the USB Type-C connector actually can transmit DisplayPort over that. So USB is really becoming more universal and supporting a lot of different interfaces, which is gonna bring me to the next connector. The last interface I wanna talk about is Thunderbolt, and this is probably the most interesting because it's not really designed to be just used for monitors. Basically, Thunderbolt combines DisplayPort and PCI Express so it can really support any type of external peripheral, not just a monitor. Thunderbolt 2 is the latest version that's out right now, and Thunderbolt 1 and 2 both use Mini DisplayPort as their connector. However, there is Thunderbolt 3 that was announced, and it's probably gonna come out relatively soon, within a year or so, and that's actually gonna use the USB Type-C connector. So we're definitely gonna see USB Type-C becoming probably a very, very, universal connector. And we already know that phones are starting to use it, Macs are starting to adopt it, and because you can transmit so much different types of interfaces over it, you can really use it for anything you want. Another interesting thing about Thunderbolt is you can actually daisy chain different devices together just by plugging one of them into the computer. Now Thunderbolt 2 actually supports 20 gigabits per second, but Thunderbolt 3 will support 40 gigabits per second. And Thunderbolt 3 is also gonna have USB 3.1 built in, so if your device 
doesn't actually support Thunderbolt, you can use that device with USB through that same USB Type-C adapter. So you don't have to have Thunderbolt to use it. The interesting thing about Thunderbolt 2 and even upcoming 3 is that they only support 1.2 version of DisplayPort. And the reason that's significant is DisplayPort 1.2 only supports 4K at 60 Hertz. It doesn't support 5K at 60 Hertz, only 30 Hertz. So Apple actually has that 5K display, but you can't even run that at 60 Hertz on Thunderbolt. So I don't know why they would even use the next version at only 1.2. Maybe they'll upgrade it, but we'll have to see. So that's just an intro into the different interfaces you might come across. And I want to point out that there are different versions of each interface. Like I mentioned, there's DisplayPort 1.2 and 3 and HDMI 2.0. You want to check to make sure that if you have a monitor, then you want to make sure that your graphics card can actually drive it and it supports the proper latest version. But other than that, there's really nothing else I had to say. If you guys are interested, let me know in the comments section so I know you guys liked it and also give it a thumbs up as well. If you want to continue watching, I've got other videos on the right hand side you can either click on or look in the description for the same link like if you're on a phone. And if you want to subscribe, I make new videos three times a week so I think it should be worth it. So I look forward to hearing from you guys. Thanks for watching. I will see you next time. Have a good one.